A Western drama, the story of the aftermath of an accidental shooting, now all too real. We need help immediately. Actor Alec Baldwin fired what he thought was an unloaded gun. Instead, cinematographer Helena Hutchins was killed as she was setting up the camera shot. And Joel Souza, the film's director, was wounded. The investigation is focused on ballistics now. What kind of rounds were used and who loaded the gun? Court documents show there was ammunition on the set, in boxes, loose on a tray, and in a fanny pack, along with several spent casings and three revolvers. Whether they were live blanks or dummy rounds isn't clear. But District Attorney Mary Carmack Altweiss says, quote, there were an enormous amount of bullets on this set, and we need to find out what kinds they were. Her office says criminal charges aren't being ruled out. One seasoned Hollywood prop master says he didn't want to work on the movie because he was asked to take on two jobs, one as an armorer and another as an assistant prop master. That premise is flawed. It's just an awful lot of landscape for even a seasoned professional to cover. If you're loading a gun, you're right up next to the camera. If you're an assistant key prop master, then you're in the background. Another longtime prop master questions the gun's chain of custody. It only goes between the armorer and the actor, and it's a very regulated process. Or at least industry experts say it should have been. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Britt, thank you very much. How can you tell if a live gun is on the set or not? A firearms and a stunt expert has a demonstration for you. And good morning to Steve Wolf. Now, Steve is a stunt coordinator. He's a firearm safety expert for movies and for television. And by the way, he's also worked with detectives who investigate deaths on movie sets. Steve, good morning. If you had been working with Alec Baldwin on the Rust set, um, what would you have said are the instructions about handling this gun that you are about to be handed? Uh, good morning, Robin. Well, first of all, I wouldn't hand a gun to someone without having personally checked it myself. I can't believe that David Halls checked the gun if he then declared cold gun. You know, that's, that, that just couldn't have happened. Uh, the gun they used was, was a, a revolver like this in which to see the cylinders, you know, you have to open this, this viewing port here or loading port, okay. and then you rotate the cylinder through and you check every cylinder to make sure they're all empty at first. And then you make sure that the rounds that you're putting in there are blanks. And it's pretty easy to tell by looking, you know, this one is a blank. This one has a bullet on the end. Uh -huh. So you start with a, a gun that you've personally cleared you load however many blanks are required for the scene. Zero blanks were required for this scene because it was a rehearsal. So it sh truly should have been an empty gun in which you could see from the back that all of the cylinders are empty. And you can, you can see from the front on this gun, because this is actually a prop gun, unlike the gun that they used, which was a real gun. But you can see on the, on the over here, these circles where bullets would normally come out, these aren't circles. These are just little slits on here so that fire, smoke, and noise can come out, but not bullets. So they did not use a prop gun. They used something that mechanically is much more similar to a real gun in which there's no obstruction. I'm going to step out of the line of yeah. fire here. I don't yeah. have guns at people. But you yeah, can you're, see you're that... You're doing well. You're doing well um, uh, illustrating here. for us. Yeah. Yeah, there's nothing in here that would stop you from being able to take a live round and put it in there. And so, so this was, you know, really, in, in my opinion, gross negligence, um, that they shouldn't have had a gun that was capable of having live rounds put in it. They shouldn't have had live rounds on the set, and they shouldn't point guns at people that they don't want to put holes in. So um, there, we had a, a previous um, comment from an expert who said, no, real guns should not be banned on set. They've been used for decades, for a long time on Hollywood sets to great success. That it's not about the real guns, it's about the real ammo. But you say completely different. You know, if, if, if you took a real gun and even put live ammo in it and didn't point it at anyone, you'd have bullets whizzing around, but no one would have been hit. If you took a real gun and you put a proper blank in it, you'd have smoke, fire, and noise. No one would be injured. So that expert is not wrong in saying that it is possible to safely use 
real guns. But if you eliminate real guns from the set, you eliminate the possibility of live ammo being introduced. Yeah. And what do you that, think? What do you think, Steve, about, didn't mean to interrupt you there, there's a little bit of a delay. What do you think then about um, who should be held liable for this? If your name is on a production as a producer, um, would you be liable? And Alex Baldwin's name is on this as a producer. Yes, I believe that the producers are liable in that they hired someone in the armorer position who lacked the experience, knowledge, and skill to capably execute the functions of that role. The armorer and the special effects coordinator are the two people on a set who, if they don't do their job absolutely perfectly, people will die. You know, you can have a crappy caterer, crappy makeup, crappy lighting, everything else. All right, so you get a crappy movie, but nobody dies. But the armorer is handing out guns, the special effects coordinator is blowing things up, those are people you don't skimp on and you don't hire someone who's, you know, this is their second job, you know, without putting them underneath an experienced supervisor to make sure that everything's being done right. And in this movie, it looks like nothing was done right. Thank you so much. Firearm safety expert Steve Wolf. He's in Boulder, Colorado, and I really appreciate your, your show and tell kind of walking us through those of us who may not be familiar with um, the workings of a real gun, uh, much less a prop gun. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Robin, thanks so much for having me this morning. So a guy who's also worked on film and TV projects as a prop master says despite this horrible tragedy, guns on sets, this person feels should not be banned. We've used real guns in Hollywood for more than a century, a hundred years of an overwhelmingly safe craft because it's fake. Uh, it does put fire out the front, but we accommodate for that by blocking the shots very carefully. Uh, Hollywood shoots millions, literally millions of blank rounds and without a fatality. It's been 28 years and the last one was an anomaly like this with a chain of events that happened that was unpredictable. All the safety procedures were not met. This show sounds like it was a disaster from the very beginning and it was a recipe for, for something to go wrong. An actor and producer who worked with Hutchins in the past called What's Happening just appalling I was extremely, uh, uh, you know, angered by by the fact that you had crew members that were, you know, calling out the red flags before, and people were ignoring it. These these guys, you know, just because you're on a western set doesn't mean um, you you can you know lower your guards and and not be prepared for for you know, the dangers of any kind of filming. The medic and armor, these kind of individuals need to be on set no matter what. And don't give me the excuse of a budget because a life is worth a lot more than a few hundred dollars more a day. According to Deadline, the producers have now hired a law firm to investigate. Later today, Santa Fe Sheriff's Office plans a news conference. Now, a crew member posted what is said to be the last photo taken of Helena Hutchins. It shows her inside a church on the set of Rust where Alec Baldwin was rehearsing. Now, she has headphones on. Uh, she's the person in the tan hat. Baldwin's in a cowboy hat. It's unclear when exactly this photo was taken. Her autopsy report could take at least six weeks, the state medical examiner's office says. It won't release info about the projectile that killed her until the autopsy is final.